now we would come to introducing Nida Sayed, our event partner. Nida Sayed had established her uh, consulting organization in Canada and uh, before uh, she would speak I would like to mention that we had worked with her as an humble hearts uh, team uh, during one of our uh, competitions, one of her competitions and we had uh, the humble hearts had was one of the first five um, first five ethical businesses that uh, she had selected. From there on, we had come on a journey of uh, having uh, branding sessions with her uh, company and consulting, and uh, and after that, we became good friends. Alhamdulillah, through which we also shared the idea of Muslima Network and this uh, initiative. So I would like to uh, ask her to come and speak about her uh, company as well. Please welcome Nida Sayed. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب شرحي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقطة تم اللساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear sisters and جزاكلا خير to sister Aisha it's an honor to be associated with the Muslima network and to work together bring talented and driven Muslims together from all over the world. As for me, uh, my name is Nida, as um, Sister Aisha just told you, and my business is Nida Said Communications. My professional background is uh, my, I did bachelor's in community resource management and master's in uh, mass communications. I also hold a certificate in self-employment training and uh, I worked for several years in um, small to large corporates like Tata Motors and GE and um, in corporate communications departments, advertising, media studies, uh, basically different kinds of mass communications. I developed internal communications, external and everything. Uh, my journey to Islam has been slow and steady. Um, I hate to admit this but for a very long time my own perception of Muslims were not very positive. Reason was the usual, as um, a lot of people say, the media and not so pleasant personal experiences with people who call themselves Muslim. I started learning about real Islam only when my kids started learning about it at the madrasas. A lot of things that my children were learning made so much sense to me, both intellectually as well as spiritually. And I was attracted to learn about Islam long before I even thought I would ever be a Muslim. The more I learned about Islam, the more I found myself and the more I realized how much I needed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance of Islam. And there came a point in my life that I felt that I just had to reclaim my faith for my own sake. There would be no peace inside me without it. I could try and find that peace anywhere else and in anything else. But something inside me told me that nothing else was real or lasting. So my journey to find myself and my purpose through Islam continues every day, just as I'm sure it does for all of you here. But it was one thing to, uh, I had a professional side of me and I have a spiritual side of me. And I had to combine them both. There, there was a time then they had to be together to become whole. And that's when I developed my, my own company. I quit my jobs and I, com uh, I started my own company called NS Communications. Through my company, um, I, want to work with, I wanted to work with people with purpose and passion. I wanted to work with Muslims uh, who truly wanted to make a difference and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. Muslims were willing to embrace leadership and to do what has not been done before. They had a strong strand and they would be willing to stand for it. Challenges won't let them go. Um, sorry, challenges won't make them let go, but only make their resolve stronger. The only problem was that sometimes these talented uh, as well as passionate Muslims either burn themselves out with too much work or, uh, they're, uh, or they find it hard to sustain and make their cause viable. Because in reality, they're so committed to their cause that even if nobody paid them, they would still do it. And that's an excellent thing, but it brings about a problem as well, which is to scale and manage things. And that's where I strive to help through a network of freelancers and my own experience. Uh, NSC provides a one-stop shop for helping leaders balance uh, purpose with success. 
and the things that I use to provide that is of course my own um, skills that I've gathered over the years management consultation and coaching training advertising and marketing communications and organization and ad administrative advisory for me the motivation for doing this is that by empowering others who are engaged in great causes I feel that I'm able to contribute to multiple causes at the same time I also have two more causes which I've recently started. One is a magazine called Being a Girl. It's a magazine for 8 to 13 year old girls, which uh, encourages girls to develop themselves, to find their own confidence, and also be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. Another uh, uh, platform that I'm uh, just about to start is called Prophetic Management. And uh, this is a platform for learning management and communications through the lens of Islamic guidance. Inshallah, I'll tell you more about it later as we go on. But um, today, I just wanted to share four small points with you about uh, the topic of unity uh, with education. The first one is nurturing our love for the sake of Allah. Uh, do not let shaitan trick us into a limiting attitude. Importance of seeking education, especially for Muslims, and building on your own individual strengths and doing your best in whatever you do. Now the first point, loving yourself for the sake of Allah. We all know that it's the noblest and the purest form of love. It is untamed by worldly interest or any other ulterior motives or anything in life. And although we all talk about loving each other for the sake of Allah, we all know that it is not easy to achieve it. It's very difficult and the only pure at heart can achieve it. The one who realizes that the pleasures of this world are nothing compared to the pleasures of the Akhira. May Allah make us among those Muslims who are able to love each other for the sake of Allah. It is an authentic hadith of Mu'ad who said that the Prophet وسلم, said to the effect of, Allah said, those who love one another for my glory will have members or pulpits of light and the prophets and the martyrs will wish they had the same. Now imagine to have just by loving each other for the sake of Allah, we can have the kind of reward which the prophets and the shaheeds would envy. And such a great reward, we all also know that no great reward comes easily. So such a great reward, we have to do some work for it. It will come to love each other would be hard. At times it will come with some maturity, some sacrifice and some understanding. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as we are starting on this journey with the Muslim network, he blesses us with his love for his sake and in turn we get blessed with his pleasure. The second point that I want to share about is don't let shaitan trick us into the limiting attitude. We must all also remember that whenever we are trying, whenever you are trying or whenever I'm trying to do anything for the sake of Allah, shaitan is not going to be too happy with us. It's a fact. Sometimes there will be challenges and struggles, although inshallah we will overcome them with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being here in Canada, I would like to share an analogy with you, which uh, my fellow business coach surely loves to share. And we always share it with all of our clients. Imagine you and me, we are standing right under Niagara Falls, and we each have a glass of half-filled water in our hands. I know uh, we all are familiar with the analogy of half-filled glasses, the argument about whether the glass is half-filled or half-empty, but that's not the point here. What we're trying to say is, how if Think about it, if I have a half a glass and you have a glass, and how silly would we look if we were to stand there right under Niagara Falls, the biggest waterfall in the world, and look at each other's glasses with envy and wonder if she has more than I, or vice versa. Wouldn't it be so meaningless to wonder if the glass is half empty or half full? Like there's so much water falling, we could, we could easily fill up not just one glass, but many, right? But silly as this sounds, Shaitan sometimes tricks us into thinking exactly like that, where our life, our talents, our purpose, or our accomplishments are concerned. We end up thinking that, you know, like what, what, uh, you know, comparing ourselves to other people or finding out, you know, I have something less than the other person or she has something less. Me and you have limits and what we see in what we see and what we can perceive. Sometimes we look at our glasses we hold and either we get too upset or too happy. But however, we forget that it is we who have limits. It's me and you who have a limited vision and limited sustenance and limited capacity. But the one who's the only one who's giving us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's limitless. He has bounties and things that we can't even imagine. He can open doors for us that we don't even know exist. He can provide for each one of us in a way that we never even imagined. So it's really important that we develop this attitude of abundance. If we find another sister who's doing something similar, 
to ours or who's, or who's engaged in a similar initiative, then let, let not shaitan trick us to feel that that is our competition. We must realize that there is more than enough goodness and success and purpose and bounties for each one of us. We should remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Wahhab, the bestower. He's the donor of all without conditions, without limits, without asking any benefits or return, giving everything to everyone, everywhere, always. He's the Al-Razak, the provider. He's the sustainer. Sustenance, both spiritual and physical, is needed to maintain the creation, and it's only he who can provide it. He's the Al-Fatah, the opener. He's the opener and the solver, the easer of all that is locked, tied, and hardened. He's Al-Alim, the all-knowing. He's the one who knows all. He knows what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen from the beginning to the end. He, he is al alim the Magnificent. He's the greatest on the earth below and the heavens above, in the realm of our sight and in the realm where sight cannot reach and where our minds cannot conceive. He's the absolute and the perfect greatness. I'd also like to talk about the next point, which is seeking education. Now, seeking education, as we all know, is a duty for every Muslim. Now, can you all Tell me, what was the first, or just think about it, what was the first word of the Quran to be ever revealed? What was the first word that was revealed to, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the whole Quran? I'm sure you all know that. The first word was Ikra, which means to read or to recite. And we all know that in Islam, there is no such thing as coincidence. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had made the first word of Quran to be revealed to us as Ikra to read and recite. We know this teaches us the importance of education in Islam. When we utter the words of Shahada, for the first, especially from, uh, from over, all of our hearts as new words or as reborn Muslims who've come back to the faith, it is no surprise that we find ourselves thirsting for knowledge and we devote ourselves to this pursuit of gaining knowledge. As women, our role through education is sometimes even, and I would argue, even greater than men. Education has positive effects, not just on our own character, but without any doubt, it affects our children, it affects our families, and it affects our societies as well. How many sisters here as, ad have, as adults taken classes on Quran and Tajweed or are taking them right now amongst all of us here who are listening? And how many of us have found that as we started doing this, we found our own purpose and calling? And so many opportunities literally fell in our lap as we started in this direction of getting Islamic knowledge. But after the and after the knowledge, it is the women who are homemakers and eventually the makers of the next generation. As they say, the one who rocks the cradle with her right hand rocks the world with the left. And no woman who walks on this earth can do all that huge task unless she's open-minded and intelligent, strong of personality and pure of heart. So as Muslims, we are more in need of education and guidance to form our own distinct Islamic personality and also to help others around us do the same. And just one last point that I want you to share with all of you today is to build on your own individual strengths and do the best in whatever we do. Now, education is very, can be very beneficial, but in today's day and age, it can also be overwhelming. We are living at the times of information overload. Everywhere we look, we are bombarded with information. Look at your day, like look in the morning to evening. How much information do you get? Be it social media, be it newspapers, be it television, be it even your banana peel, for instance. Like you buy a banana from a supermarket and there's a there's a label on that even. Like there's no like information is coming to us from every angle. So we have to be selective in our education. We should try to look for customized education, recognize and understand our own unique strengths. Each one of us has a unique life situation and unique life challenges. We must not try to compete or copy others or copy men or others who are not in the same situation as us. Sometimes it is our unique situations that push us to do things differently and that is how great change happens. We know the gates of knowledge are open to all of us in today's day and age more than ever and we should try and make the most of it as long as it doesn't go against, of course, our feminine nature and against our deen. It is also responsibility uh, that we gain knowledge and there's also responsibility in even in gaining knowledge. I draw inspiration from a short story that I would like to share with uh, 
you are, and I hope uh, you draw some inspiration from that as well. You know, when the Sahabis uh, migrated from Makkah to Medina at, at the famous Hijra, they were being troubled by the other members of the Quraysh. Their own tribe was troubling them, and they had lots of hardships to face. And eventually, they finally moved to Medina. When they moved to Medina, the Ansar, the people who were there, they shared half of everything they owned with each Sahabi. So imagine that the people who moved from uh, Mecca to Medina, they now have, without much effort, they have a home, they have a place to stay, they are having food, they have these brothers and sisters who are willing to take care of them, and they have all these resources available to them. But the very next day, the Sahabis did not sit at home and relax. They did not talk about the struggles they had been facing for the last few years, although they had been, we all know they had been facing quite a few struggles. But they did not talk about those struggles that they had been face, facing at the hand of their own tribe or Quraysh. Instead, they said, uh, and also another thing they didn't do was, the Ansar were farmers by profession, but the, uh, the, uh, the Sahabis who uh, came here from Makkah, they didn't ask them that, okay, let's go and help you with the farming. But they knew that they were merchants and businessmen. So the Sahabis asked the Ansar, show us where the market is. They knew their own strength. They went to the markets and they got down to work right away. So they got, get, got down to business, building on their own strengths and building on the economy around themselves. Now, this is a great lesson for all of us. We should take time to understand our own strengths, our unique calling, and develop it further. Because not only develop it, but also implement it for our own progress, that of the society and that of all the community around us. And of course, all of it in order to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant it to all of us. I would just like to make a dua, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, Ijma'in, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala increase in all of us knowledge. But also, another dua which uh, I would urge all of us to make whenever or whenever we have time is a dua which was uh, which was narrated. It's an authentic hadith and it was narrated by Umm Salama radiallahu anha. Allahumma inni as aluka ilman nafian wa riskan tayiban wa amalan mutakabbalan. O oh Allah, I ask you for knowledge that is of benefit, a good provision, a provision, a risk which is pure, and deeds that will be accepted by you, inshallah. Ameen. Jazakallah for all of you to coming here and listening to all of us on behalf of Nida Said Communications. And to thank all of you, I would be I would like to give you a free copy of my ebook, Glamorize and Jumpstart Your Small Business. I would be sending it to you through the Muslim Network after the webinar uh, in the next few days, inshallah. Uh, and I'm sure the Muslim Network is also going to give you a lot of other goodies at the end of the webinar. This is an ebook for people who want to start or develop their own business. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Aisha, for uh, giving me the opportunity to be associated with the Muslim Network and to speak at this and contribute at this webinar. Jazakallah.